this class of our tutorial uh, as you can see here we are going to model something similar to the building facade of the pencil office simple factory building so i'm going to show you a quick trick you can use in grasshopper to model something similar to this and for the architecture design we're going to practice this in grasshopper so here you can see that i have model this in grasshopper we can control those as you can see here i can bring them down something like this and just with a simple graph mapper and some uh, technique about relative item i'm going to teach you how you can use it to produce the results and you can see we can change the size the number of the divisions uh, here we have the length of this facade and then we can just extrude that to produce the results okay before we start from scratch uh, if you're new to grasshopper and you want to know more about grasshopper what it is and how it works i'm going to put a playlist up here which you can watch and get started with grasshopper and then watch our tutorials and for those who want to learn more about grasshopper we have some advanced tutorials uh, in the grasshopper course which is called power course and you can also watch the lessons up here okay let's get started from scratch i'm going to go for a new document and start this from scratch so before we start let me just explain this uh, what i want to do is to draw a line as the uh, height of the facade and what i want to do is to divide it by a graph mapper so i can control the height of these divisions so what we want to do is to simply just draw a line and we're going to control bring it up and have this and we have to import that into grasshopper so let's just go to the params menu and put a curve here so you can see this and i have put the bifocus plugin so now we can just click on this and set this to the line and we're good to go so the next part is to divide the line the edge of the facade into divisions so what i want to do is to go to the curve and use this evaluate curve tool to divide this okay if you want to divide the curve into uh, simple divisions you can go to the divide curve and we can just connect this you can see that we can divide this into sections but for now what we want to do is to control the division so we have talked about the evaluate curve if you have not watched this evaluate curve tutorial you can also watch it up here i will put it in the cards so let's just reparameterize this and go for the uh, when we reparameterize the line or the curve it's going to be from zero let's just type this to one so those who know about this uh, the domain of a curve or a line can be from zero to something but when you reparameterize this it's going to be from zero to one so now what i want to do is to simply just use a range and if i connect this to the parameter you can see that it's going to divide from zero to one into steps so here we go and this is just a division but the reason i am using the range is that we can just use a graph mapper in front of it so those who don't know about graph mapper again you can watch the tutorial up here we have talked about graph mapper and we can connect it here to the graph mapper section and now we can control that so let's just use a graph type and i'm going to go to the busier distribution you can see that we can control the distribution and as you can see we can control that and now we have those points which we can uh, use it to produce the horizontal lines so i'm going to go to the curve section and use this one line sdl gonna connect the point to the start because we want to start from here the direction is it x direction so let's just give this an x and now we can just give this a length and increase the length okay so now you can see that when we change this line we have a new facade let's just move this up uh, we can change the divisions we can change the graph play with the handles and we're good to go okay so the next part is to produce something similar to this one and connect it okay i'm not going to exactly model this in grasshopper but something similar 
Uh, what we want to do is to divide these lines into simple divisions. So assume that we divide this from maybe 5 to 16. Okay, we can increase or decrease the division. And now you can see that this will produce uh, 17 groups with 10 divisions. So this is going to be the first group, the second one, and up to the 17. Okay, and the 10 division points are these points, 0, 1, 2, 3. If you don't know about groups, again, I will put up a video up here which is related to flatten and graph, so you can learn about it. Okay, so what we want to do here is to control this. To make this as simple as possible, I'm going to right click and use the simplify thing, and you can see these groups, 17 groups with 10 division points. Okay, what we want to do is to connect something like this to this point, okay? And here to here, and so on, or something here to here. And what that means is that we want to connect a relative points. So assume that this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, this is group 7. Let's just type it again. And this is group 8. And what we want to do is to work with relative path. That means that we are going to say uh, if this is a point which is number 0 in the group 7, we want to connect this to number 1 of group 8, right? So this is basically a relative path. That means that we are going to relate the groups and the indexes together. So what we want to do is to go to the uh, sets, the three section, and here we have this relative item and relative items. For this tutorial, we're going to talk about relative item because we're just going to match two set of points. There's also another advanced thing here which you can use, which is basically, if I can find it, it's really uh, powerful and it's split tree. So I guess that I'm going to add this to the course. But for those who want to know, the most powerful, uh, powerful tools in the tree section is relative item, relative items, replace path. That is really powerful because you can just change the groups. Split tree that gives more power to the relative item thing. So now we're going to just scratch the surface. So let's just go for the relative item and we're going to give this three uh, points to the three inputs. So you can see that I have simplified this thing. And again, if you don't know about flatten graph, I have put that in the card section. So what we want to do is to type something in the offset. And you can see that it's a text input. And that means that we have to type a relative path or offset in the tree section. Okay, this is really easy if I explain that to you. Uh, we have two sections. One is about the groups and second is about the indexes okay so this is the group or path and this is the indexes or the numbers of the points so what we want to do is to have something similar to this uh, if we just type let's just say plus one okay this is going to be awkward let's just type into the grasshopper section i'm going to use this scribble thing Okay, we can type something like this, um, plus one, I'm going to explain this. Okay, that means that we want to, uh, each index is going to go to the next group and the next index. So, if we have a point here, it's going to go up one group and up one index, and it's going to connect, okay? So, this is really simple. Let's just copy this and go to the offset, set the text. And you can see that the wrap path or the groups is false. The wrap items is false. That means that when we just reach this point, this point has a next group, but doesn't have any next index or item. So what the problem is that we want to just uh, ignore this one. And that's why this is false for both of these things, especially for the last path or group. So this one doesn't have any further groups and doesn't have any further item. So what we want to do is to have these two groups go to the curve and use this line thing which uses two points, 
connect these two groups. So you can see how easy it is to connect these things. Remember about the division, you can go for even numbers to have uh, better results. I guess that we can just focus on even. And now we want another path, which is this point is going to go backwards. So we can go and say minus one. And that's it. So you can see how easy it is and we can connect these things together. If we go for a odd number, you can see that this is how it works. We can just change the number of division and we can also work with this graph mapper so you can see how easy it is to work with the divisions. Let's just delete everything, or, excuse me, preview off and just have those lines you can see how easy it is to produce those divisions so if i go to the offset and type maybe plus two you can see that's going to go to each second group let me just put the divisions on so you can see it okay so each point is going to go to the second group and the next point that is why we have this one Okay, so you can see that we can always just edit this and have this offset to second minus one and those things. Let's just turn this on and you can see that this is another pattern. But for this example, we're going to go plus one plus one for the path and items and plus one minus one for, for the path and items. Okay, so that was a tutorial. We can simply extrude that. So let's just finish this tutorial by extruding these lines in the y direction. Okay. And we can just give this a number. And let's just bake this. Here we go and we have the results. So you can see that we can produce those patterns by simply dividing and working with the graph mapper and producing the facade, building facade. And thank you for watching. Like this video, comment below. What do you think about this tutorial? And also subscribe to our channel. See you next time.